morning is, even I overcame. Even I overcame. Turn your Bibles, if you would, please, to Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Even I overcame. Revelation chapter 3. We want to begin with verse 16. But the Lord says, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke, and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now, before I go further, I want to stop for just a moment. And I'm going to talk about repentance, because to have repentance, there has to be, there has to be present a sense of conviction for one to repent. We live in a world today full of God-haters. And there's a difference between just the individual who, who is a, who's a sinner that's never been saved, that's never re repented, but, but they don't hate God. You know, they're not, they're not a God-hater. We have God-haters in the world today. They make no sense. They have no common sense. They, their eyes are not attuned to the signs of the time. You can hear them when they speak, that they have their own specific agenda. Many of them are worshipers of creation, more than they are worshipers of the Creator. They have an agenda that they speak of and they press forth. And God-haters can never repent because they're never guilty. God-haters are never sorry for what they do because they don't ever see themselves as doing anything wrong. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always your fault or their fault. And they never take accountability on their own for their own behaviors, for their own speech acts, for their own physical behaviors. And it's sad to say, but they're God-haters. They simply hate God. Later on in Revelation, they talk about it, that man, even in the end times, God-haters will shake their fists towards heaven and curse God. They'll curse Him till the day that they die, and it'll be a hot day in hell when they die. And you see, you'll never hear a God-hater ever say that they made a mistake. You'll never hear that. You'll never hear, now, for an example, listen to me closely now, you'll, you'll never hear a God-hater admit that they were wrong or admit that they ever made a mistake. See, you'll never hear them say something like this. You'll never hear a God-hater say, they'll never admit that Tom Brady did not cheat with footballs in deflate gate. You'll never hear them say that. That's, that's true. That's true. You will never hear them say that. Now, I know many of you in this congregation are God-haters. You're Tom Brady God-haters. It's a difficult task I have to, to try and cure, to try to bring some conviction to your soul. But I think I can get there eventually. But Repent, he says. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Verse 20. And this is what I want to talk about here this morning. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Now, Christian people, let me tell you, this is not just talking about a singular event once you got saved. Christ doesn't knock on your heart one time. And if through conviction and repentance... We invite him into our hearts, and then this verse is over. 
That's not what that means. Amen. You see, I think this is a continual process. I think it's a continual thing. And I said last week, I believe it was, that if you have emptiness in your life at all, if there is a void, place of void in your life, if, if there's a, a space that's, that's without something, and, and there's a sense of incompleteness, then I encourage you to invite God in to fill that void, to fill that space. You see, folks, even I right now as your pastor, as a preacher, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, having walked with the Lord my whole life and preached the gospel for nearly 40 years, I'm currently speaking this scripture even to my Lord today, and I speak to Him and I say, Lord, come into me. I want to sup with you and I want you to sup with me. And I want to commune with you and I want you to commune with me. I hear you knocking on my heart's door and Almighty God, come into me and let us fellowship together. Come into me and let us commune together. <laughs> Even I'm currently praying that prayer to the Lord. Christian people, you need to pray that prayer. We need to be about praying that prayer. We need to be about hearing the knock of the Lord. You know, we're so busy today and there's so many other sounds in the world today. And just a few days ago, Pastor Charlie came over to our house and I guess he knocked on our back door. I don't know. I didn't hear it. And I saw the shadow come walking around our house and then knock on the front door. And I wasn't going to answer it because generally people who knock on the front door just want money. You know, and they go tell their buddies and in 15 minutes somebody else comes back and then they want money and then I got to tell them, you know, okay, this is not a... So I almost didn't answer the door and then finally I thought, well, I better get up and answer the door. So I got up and answered the door and it was Pastor Charlie. I said, Pastor Charlie, what are you doing at the front door? I said, come knock on the back door. He said, well, I knocked on the door and you didn't hear me. See, and I think Jesus, Jesus isn't going to pound on our front door. Jesus isn't going to pound on our back door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Do you hear my knock? Do you hear my knock? And if you'll hear my knock, you'll hear my voice. And if you'll open the door and let me come in, I'll come in and sup with you. Amen. And you with me. And we'll commune together. And I'll be your God. And you'll be my child. And we'll have a relationship. And whatever's going on in your life, I'll fix it. I'll fill the void. I'll fill you up with springs of living water that overflows. I'll share with you the power in the blood. Hallelujah. And let you know that where I've gone, I've gone to prepare a place for you. That when I come back, I will take you where I have prepared a place for you. And oh, by the way, it's a mansion just over the hilltop. And you're going to love that place I prepared for you. But before that time, let us sup together. Let us commune together. Can you say amen? amen? I encourage you to pray that prayer. If there's an emptiness, if there's a void, if there's a presence of absence, pray that prayer and ask God to come in. And then verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my house. I think I just said that a little bit. And then he says, even as I also overcame, even as the Son of God also overcame. God had to overcome something even himself. Yes. Think it not strange that maybe we're forced on a regular basis to overcome something. Can you say amen? Yes. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith <coughs> unto the churches. Hallelujah. And as I read this months ago in preparation for this message, there are times where I just wept knowing that the Lord said, even though so, I overcame. And knowing that I have to face issues in my life that I have to overcome. And then I have to overcome it again. And then I have to overcome it again. And I have to overcome it again. And the Lord says, fear not, for I've overcome. Amen. And I am with you that you will overcome. Can you say Amen. Now, before I close here, just for a few minutes, I want to go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. And I want to talk about the great battle that raged that took place. 
And so after the Lord had supped with his disciples, he told Judas to scare it. He said, go out and do what you're going to do and do it quickly. He took Peter, James, and John and went to the garden and began to pray earnestly. He said to the three, he said, stay here and kneel and pray. And about a stone's cast away, the Lord left them, went to a place by himself and began to seek his God. Began to seek God Almighty the Father. And the scripture tells us that as the Lord prayed, he prayed this. He said, if there be any way, let this cup pass from me. If there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. Now let us get a picture real quick. On one side of Gethsemane stood 12 legions of angels with sword in hand. On the other side of Gethsemane stood all the demons of hell with sword in hand. And all of creation witnessed and watched as the Son of the living God now turned to His Father. And now there was a battle, there was an agreement, there was a war that was waging between the Son and the Father with such intensity that Luke tells us He even sweat as it were great drops of blood. And he said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. And folks, I can't help but think that the father didn't say back to the son, son, you're just going to have to dig deeper. You're just going to have to dig deeper down inside the foundations of the world, down inside your soul. Son, I understand, but you're going to have to dig deeper. And I can't help but think that the Father said, don't lose your reward. For the joy that was set before him, the scripture tells us, he obeyed and become obedient even unto death, the death of the cross. And now I think the Father is saying, dig deeper. You've got to go deeper. It's in you someplace. you just got to go and find it. And I believe the Father said to the Son, don't lose your reward because right now you think it's too hard. Right now you think what you're going to have to go through is too hard. Don't lose your reward because you feel sorry for yourself. Dig deeper. And folks, I'm here to tell you, there are times in life when you face circumstances. And you know what? If you're going to get through it, and if the circumstances are going to destroy you, you just got to dig deeper. Amen. You just got to dig deeper. You got to go down in there someplace and you got to find it and you got to dig it out. Yes. Hallelujah. And so the Lord went back and saw the three and he said to Peter, the scripture says he looked at Peter and said to Peter, what? Can you not wait one hour? One hour. Twelve legions of angels on that side of the garden. All the demons of hell on that side of the garden. All of them with swords in hand, watching this drama take place. The Lord says to Peter, what could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, that you enter not into temptation. And so the Lord goes back and begins to pray again, echoing the same sentiments to the Father. Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but thine be done. 